What if the most mysterious enigma in the ancient world is not in Jerusalem or Egypt? What if the most puzzling puzzle of human ingenuity rests silently in Lebanon, camouflaged in plain sight, and is visited annually by tourists who snap photos without suspecting that they stand before something that might redefine history? Baalbek, in the Bika Valley, is typically recalled as the location of stunning Roman temples, towering pillars, and detailed reliefs honoring Jupiter and Bacchus. But beneath the classical majesty is something much older, more bizarre, and completely inexplicable, the colossal megalithic blocks that resist explanation. I had the unusual luxury of visiting there myself, being among stones so unimaginably big that the brain has trouble even comprehending what the eyes are beholding. You can convince yourself that they're mere rocks, carved and piled. But when you see the real magnitude, when you do the math, 1.7 million pounds per block, suddenly all your assumptions about ancient engineering fall apart. If this kind of story touches your heart, if you're someone who cares about truth, responsibility, and speaking up for the voiceless, please like this video, subscribe to our channel and share it with someone who should hear it. Let's get started. Recently, a team of scientists fed data from the Baalbek megaliths into a supercomputer, programming algorithms that could test millions of engineering scenarios in seconds. They wanted to know whether ancient technology, particularly Roman-era cranes, pulleys, and manpower, could account for the movement and placement of stones weighing up to 1,500 tons. The results were staggering. 50,000 simulations were run. Every single one failed catastrophically. The AI, computing unprejudiced, unhampered by the assumption that, the Romans did it, stated that the physics of transportation were quite impossible with the equipment which is known to have been available then. And this is the essence of the enigma, the Romans were able to transport stones of 900 tons. That alone is marvelous. But 1,000 tons was too much for them. But somehow, Blocks weighing more than three fully loaded jumbo jets, the equivalent of hundreds of elephants stacked one on top of the other, were quarried and hauled half a mile and hoisted twenty feet into the air with surgical precision. Picture yourself standing in the valley, surrounded by olive groves, looking out at the remains of the Temple of Jupiter and the Temple of Bacchus. You see classical Roman artistry in every column and carving. But then your eyes fall to the lower enclosure wall, the foundation, and suddenly you're no longer looking at Roman construction. You're staring at something else entirely. These blocks are not just large, they're monstrous. And they're not rough or crude. They are precision cut, fitting together so perfectly that even a razor blade cannot slip between them. Today's builders would be unable to match this quality of work with diamond technology and computer-controlled equipment but these stones have lain undisturbed for thousands of years, weathering earthquakes, erosion, and the passage of time without moving. The renowned Trilithon stones alone weigh approximately 800 tons each. They are 20 feet above ground level in the foundation of the temple, requiring us to describe how the ancient builders were able to lift them into position. The most famous block, which is called Hajar al-Hibla, the stone of the pregnant woman, was estimated to weigh around 1,000 tons and was 68 feet long, 14 feet wide, and 14 feet tall. To visualize that, picture a city bus-sized block of stone but the weight of 200 cars put together. But even that was not the biggest. Archaeologists found in 2014 an even bigger giant in the quarry, a 1,650-ton megalith, perhaps the largest single stone block ever created by man. 16,000 individuals would need to lift together, each 200 pounds, just to budge it from the ground. How was this ever supposed to be moved, much less set? The quarry itself is located roughly half a mile from the temple complex. Half a mile is trivial when you're walking with nothing to carry. But now imagine dragging a stone that weighs more than an entire modern naval ship across soft ground, over uneven terrain, without it sinking or toppling and then raising it into the air. The ancient quarry reveals details of the process, channels cut with remarkable accuracy, wedges placed strategically, wood soaked in water to split the bedrock. The method is brilliant. Laborers drilled a series of holes, wedged them with wood, wet them until they swelled, and gradually split the rock along a true line. But splitting the blocks was merely the start. 
the transport nightmare had really just begun. Removing these beasts from the quarry pit, through fields, and to the building site took a degree of skill in logistics and physics, previously thought to have been beyond those of ancient times. The Romans are greatly to be credited. They were brilliant engineers. They constructed aqueducts that conveyed water for miles, concrete that has survived longer than our own, and domes such as the Pantheon which boggle the mind. Their cranes could lift 300 tons in ideal circumstances, which was the world record then. But the stones of Baalbek laugh at 300 tons. They sneer at our suppositions. They are five times the weight of the greatest Roman capacity. So if not the Romans, who? And if not using cranes, how? Archaeologists have long speculated about earthen ramps, armies of laborers with rollers and ropes, or even floating the stones on barges. But these concepts have serious flaws. The ramps would take more earth than stone. Rollers would be crushed under their own weight. Barges would sink in an instant. And manpower? The numbers required outstrip the population of the region at the time. This is where AI analysis has been a game changer. It runs each scenario through physics, not estimations. And when the AI crunched the numbers, the old ideas fell apart. None of them hold up. And then the AI started coming up with competing models. It ran sledges, enormous wooden frames with specially crafted runners, oiled and greased with animal fat. It ran pulleys, levers, and counterweights in thousands of combinations. What it learned is astonishing, under extremely controlled conditions, with carefully designed sledges, meticulous route planning, and possibly 500 to 1,000 laborers, the stones might have been moved. Not safely, not easily, but theoretically. The key was spreading the weight among many sledges, eschewing soft ground, employing resting places, and even temporarily altering the landscape with gravel or paving. In other words, the ancients may have been far more sophisticated than we've credited them for, masters of logistics, physics, and project management. Yet even if transport can be explained with this level of ingenuity, the precision of the construction remains staggering. These blocks fit together with tolerances rivaling aerospace engineering. High-resolution imaging shows interlocking three-dimensional joints designed to prevent movement in multiple directions. This isn't random stacking. This is deliberate engineering, done with templates, uniform measurements, and a degree of planning that implies industrial organization. AI analysis even detected tool marks in conflict with bronze chisels, implying the potential use of lost methods or tools we cannot recognize. The constructors of Baalbek weren't merely powerful. They were precise, organized, and perhaps working with information that was lost when their civilization fell. This poses the disturbing question, have we underestimated what was lost in ancient times? There are plenty of examples, Roman concrete, Greek fire, Damascus steel. Whole technologies have vanished before, to be rediscovered centuries later. What if the builders of Baalbek had worked out methods of cutting, lifting, and joining stone that we simply do not know anymore? Not alien, not supernatural, but advanced human knowledge protected by guilds, passed down through word of mouth, and dissipated in cataclysms. The potential is earth-shaking. It implies that our forebears were far from primitive, yet incredibly ingenious engineers whose secrets eluded them with time. The Romans themselves might not have even realized the basis on which they were working. Signs indicate that the megaliths were already existing before Roman building, and they served as a foundation on which temples were subsequently constructed. The Romans recycled, reconfigured, and enlarged, as they so frequently did, acknowledging the impossibility of exact replica building the megaliths. This accounts for the bizarre juxtaposition of impossibly huge blocks with more typical Roman stonework over them. Baalbek is not a single-phase building but a palimpsest tapestry of civilizations, some familiar, some lost, to each of which it has contributed its signature. And thus we find ourselves standing today in front of Baalbek, equipped with lasers, satellites, and artificial intelligence, only to be taken aback by admitting that we are still perplexed. These stones challenge all that we believed we knew about ancient technology. They compel us to question the boundaries of human ingenuity. 
Maybe the greatest enigma of the ancient world is not the pyramids, or Stonehenge, but these silent behemoths in Lebanon's valley, stones that do not belong and yet do. They remind us that history is not a linear progression but a cycle of knowledge acquired and knowledge lost. They whisper the past was not primitive but maybe in some ways more advanced than we are afraid to think. And so the question is still left. What is the most startling revelation? That AI simulations demonstrate the Romans could not have constructed them. That technologies lost might have existed once, slipped away into nothingness. That our forebears possessed mathematical, logistical, and engineering abilities similar to our own. Or that the biggest shock is that these stones remain present, ready for anyone to stop in their shadow and face the unthinkable.